to go back to the live group. Locked and loaded, ready to roll on a spectacular Sunday night. The main event is on, and this is Beyond Ringside. Fast Steady Lane, live from the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios. Joining us this weekend, right now, tag team partner, the Wicked Nemesis. Wick, what's up, buddy? Man, we already had big news about the and now we have Liz Savage. Liz. Ladies and hey, what's going on, guys? Liz, it's it is been great. About a year. Yeah, it has. We were. I was just going back over some uh, posters. I don't know. Um, I have not had a chance to post it yet. But um, we recreated a poster that was orig- for your original interview. We've got the new one up on the screen right now. Um, first yeah. off, how, um, we originally met when you were getting ready when you were doing a promotional run for the Dangerous Women of Wrestling, Chad Thomas and Company, DWOW. Um, I still get, keep in touch with Chad every once in a while, and I've been able to monitor you, uh, monitor you both on uh, Facebook and Twitter. And yep, yep, yep. now, before we go into the current circumstance, um, outside of what's going on right now, how's everything going with the pro wrestling career? Um, I'm currently the international, um, the international champion of a company out here that does strictly custom wrestling videos um, and that's going pretty well. We haven't done anything since May. I'm in California now so things are a little different out here. Um, I really haven't had too much time to be involved in the wrestling scene here because of work and other things but I've done a little bit. I was featured on a local Lucha Libra promotion which was called uh, PWE which is now shut down but we had TV on a local on a local Spanish network and then also I did a I did a show with Mach 1 Pro Wrestling which is NWA's Farm League okay Wicked Nemesis come on in with Liz uh, well you know we have we have a thousand things to talk about with Occupy LA but I want to ask something really quick uh, Mike Cersei come on earlier and you being part of the NWA will like this uh, he said that 2012 at the very beginning of the year he is. They are starting back the NWA Women's World Tag Team Titles. Well, and, uh, I'm not part of the NWA, so I don't know how that would affect me. And honestly, I don't think that NWA here in California has any any interest in using me whatsoever. My services have been offered, and as of this point, I've been here over a year, and they haven't used me on any of their shows. I've been to about a handful of shows. You know, but I mean, it is what it is, and it seems like pretty well across the country they have some fractured ideals of what NWA should be, and until they kind of come together and and put something good together, I mean, I don't really foresee me doing much in wrestling these days because it's so fractured and it's such a mess. Now, let me ask if I could, please. Um, I know that. Um, have you tried both uh, Mach One and Hollywood? Well, Mach 1 is like the school promotion, and then NWA Hollywood is the actual NWA promotion. I've worked at Mach 1. I've attended some classes there. Um, NWA Hollywood, I've been to a bunch of their shows. They're very well aware of me. The booker um, or owner, Dave Marquez, whatever he, whatever he's considered president of NWA California, knows me. He's in touch with me. Um, I've never been asked to work any of those shows, even as a manager, which is a little bit disheartening um, because I I am a really good manager, and I really think that I should have at least been given a chance. But it, it is what it is. It really doesn't bother me that much. I'm kind of getting over it, you know. It's I've done a lot in wrestling. I've done a lot more than a lot of other people who like to sit back and complain and speak nonsense. So at this point, just sitting back and taking a few bookings here and there is more worthwhile to me, especially since I've been acting more anyway. Really? Yeah. Now, what um, I, uh, recent, go ahead. I, I, I filmed a short film. It's called Sangre. If you Google Sangre and Liz Savage, you'll find the trailer for it. It's a short film. It's not out yet. It's going to be about 15 minutes long. I've also been recently on an episode of some CBS beating show called Excuse. Um, I've been an extra uh, in a couple of movies, and I've also been a paid audience member for a bunch of different t- a bunch of different TV shows. Okay, so you're branching out, not just in uh, you're trying to branch out in pro wrestling, but definitely branching out of the acting career. Congratulations, our best to you on that. Well, I am in LA. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the mecca for it all, or one of two meccas for it all. Now, let me. Um, we're going to go ahead and dive straight on in. Now, the Occupy movement has really taken off in a number of different directions. But you've seen, I've, I've watched on the different news channels, 
and to some I will do the air quotes and say news channels. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there you go. But we might have differing opinions about what those which channels should get the air quotes. Um, now, in Los Angeles, now better yet, before I, let me preface it with this: I've understood that there is an Occupy Birmingham getting re- um, that is yeah. in the that is in the grassroots phases. Um, yeah, they're doing their TAs now. I heard. I have not heard that much out of what they hope to accomplish and what issue they're trying to press to the forefront. Um, I was very verbo- I'm very verbose and vocal at the same time. Um, last week on this show when I made the comment that if they are wanting to target, per se, the current situation with the Jefferson County Commission and the Birmingham Sewer Service, which is now in private, um, I think, private receivership, and all of the previous, um, I want to go ahead and just say the word, sins of the father, from previous administrations in the county commission that have caused Jefferson County and Alabama, central Alabama, to be in such dire financial straits, I'll be with them 110%. However, there's been some real misconstruction um, and a misconstruence by a lot of people and a lot of the media as to exactly what different cities are trying to accomplish. What I'm, I'm going to I'm going to ask first. Well. What originally drew you to the Occupy LA movement, and what all exactly all your are you trying to? Um, or what's your goals? Um, I think there's a lot of misconstruence. Can you turn that music off? Um, I think there's a lot of misconstruence as to what the movement is overall, um, because a lot of people don't understand what exactly it is that's going on. Um, some individual cities have picked up their individual causes, but overall the movement is supposed to be in standing in solidarity with Wall Street and our financial crisis that's worldwide. And if you know anything about our financial crisis, <laughs> our financial crisis was it has been created by the world banks and by the corporations owned by these same entities that own the world banks. And I mean, Everybody asks, I mean, we have a demands committee here. Everybody asks exactly what the objectives are. And there's no clear list of objectives except for the fact that we really want to free up our money. And I think by freeing up our money, that's going to trickle down and it's going to make a lot of social change. And everything that people are looking to do and change is going to happen. And by taking money out of politics, that's going to be a huge part of it as well. And not just letting these politicians who represent big businesses speak, but, but by letting people who actually represent the people speak and that's what a lot of people forget our government we don't work for our government our government's supposed to work for us it's supposed to it's supposed to work for us I'll li- that's what I was trying to interject Wicked Nemesis come on in with Liz Savage first of all Liz uh, thank you for what you're doing with somebody that you know <clears throat> takes pride in knowing a little bit about you know the government and as you said what they're supposed to do for us uh, Tell us the, the environment, first of all. I have several questions, so if Eddie don't mind, I'm going to take over about five minutes. Here. I so many questions to ask you. Uh, Go ahead. What about the environment that Occupy LA? I mean, what is it like out there? Are there, uh, are there you know, the people starting, you know, like, I don't want to call them the black block, but, you know, people out there starting, you know, crap, or are there people out there, is everybody in solidarity? I mean, how is it? Um, well... I've heard a lot about, like, Black Rock. I've seen what they've done recently in Oakland the other day. My friends who are up in Oakland right now who left from Occupy LA actually have pictures of them breaking windows and also joining force with their, the cops. So there's some question as to who exactly is running the Black Rock up in Oakland and across the country that we've seen already. Here in LA, um, honestly, we haven't had any problems. The LAPD is standing behind us, as is our city council, which is amazing. Um, we're actually the only Occupy movement to have actually occupied our police department one night to make room for the farmer's market. Um, the LAPD has been working very closely with us and promises that what we've seen in Atlanta, Oakland, and New York is not going to happen here. Now, being that said, the LAPD may not be the ones to come after us, but at some point there might be someone to come after us. Um, the only police presence that we've had here really um, are because of either outsiders or because of people who have come and join this Occupy movement thinking it's just a festival or a camp out. And because it's so peaceful here, because we don't have that police problem here, they've come here and it's caused a lot of 
strike their community because the majority of the community just wants to see this action happen. Um, a lot of us are full-time occupiers here. We have about a 1,000 people. We're the biggest occupation in the country besides New York. We have at least a 1,000 people camping nightly. Um, we On the weekends, we get a couple thousand people here. Today was a little bit less because of the rain. Yesterday it was crazy because we had a teach in here about our financial pro problems. We blocked off a street. Not only that, but we also, this is the 15th anniversary of Proposition 215, which legalizes medical marijuana in California. So because, yeah, because of that, the Prop 215 people were out here, and uh, yesterday they were handing out free marijuana to everybody, <laughs> and the cops weren't very happy with that, so that caused a little bit of an issue. Nobody got arrested over it, thank God. Um, it, was, it was pretty comical to see, though. They're out here again today talking about medical marijuana. It, as I said, it is their 15th anniversary. And you do have a lot of groups that are coming in and using the Occupy movement to push your own agenda, which is, in some cases, absolutely acceptable. And in most cases, it's kind of acceptable. But what it is is you have to remember when you're bringing these other when you're bringing these other ideals into a group of people that might not share your ideals, it might wreak some havoc, and it certainly does here. I mean, we have people who are Republicans, Democrats, uh, Tea Partyists. We have, you know, total conservatives. We have total liberals. We have a combination of every background you can imagine here in L.A., and there's been a lot of conflict, yet at the same time, there's been a lot of growth and a lot of personal achievement from people learning about each other. So it's really Really a neat, neat thing. Uh, real quick, before uh, wicked, wait, 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 wait. Said, do do me a favor. Black block. Uh, those are the guys that dress in all black, have the bandanas on the face, the black caps, black skull caps, black sunglasses. Uh, you know, we were talking about. You know, you and I were texting out asking about uh, the agent provocateurs, and you actually kind of mentioned it about the uh, the the cops dressing up as the black block and actually starting riots. Now, you said you've seen this in Oakland. Well, this has happened we in Oakland. Yeah, we saw that in Oakland, and we definitely have agent provocateurs amongst us here. We've had some serious issues with that, with things being stolen, with things being said, with crazy people attacking us, with phones being hacked, with our Internet being hacked, with people following us. You know, we don't really know who's what or who they work for. I mean, for instance, we did a really big thing against Obama where we took over a median here where he had a, a presidential luncheon to raise money for his campaign, and he was in town for it. They took over a median that led onto the highway, which is perfectly legal. Um, the LAPD came out and told them they had to move. We had about 40 occupiers, 12 tents out there. They showed the LAPD the law that they did not have to move. So the Secret Service came, told them that they had to move, and the LAPD stood up for us and told the Secret Service, no, indeed, they do not have to move. Eventually, after a nine-hour nine standoff, Obama did have to drive past the protesters, which was pretty awesome. He didn't roll down his window or anything, but he did have to drive past them. And, um, you know, we did know that the next few days he was going to be in town. The Secret Service was going to be here checking us out, seeing what was going on. I mean, there's people looking at us. There's people looking at us every day. There's thousands of pictures being taken of us every day. But the thing you have to remember here is there's nothing that we're doing illegal other than camping on the grass here at Occupy LA. And the cops said that's okay. They're not enforcing that law right now. Now, we can... And it's awesome that the LAPD would do that because, you know, you look at uh, what happened in Canada a few years ago when the G20 summit was there and they had them, told them where they, they couldn't stand 300 uh, feet away and come to find out everybody that they arrested was arrested illegally. So they were just doing snatch and grabs and I was going to ask you if any of those have been done out there or have you heard about anybody, you know, with the snatch and grabs? Because that's only supposed to be during a time of war when a state of emergency had occurred. And I was going to ask you if that's happened because it sounds like in L.A. Uh, is not what happened in Canada and some of the things that I've heard has happened in Atlanta because, you know, I know you've heard some of the horror stories that are going out there that had 19 people arrested just hours ago. And uh, I was going to ask you, you know, you mentioned about that. Uh, what about some daily struggles, you know, some pros and cons that are going on in the Occupy movement? Um, well, the pros and cons of the Occupy movement, especially out here, the pros are that, um, you know, we are getting a lot accomplished. We've gotten um, 12, we've gotten 12 judges disqualified from, from the bench. 
Um, not only that, not only have we gotten 12 judges disqualified from the bench, we've gotten most of Orange County government um, disqualified as well. So that's really cool. Um, they have some things going before the Supreme Court. There's a lot of various things that are going on here and across the nation where responsible banking measures are being put back in. I mean, uh, right now, I'm sorry, I don't know if you hear the yelling in the background. There's a march going on. We have multiple marches going on throughout the day here. You know, they've closed banks for, um, they've closed banks down for like a couple hours during the business day where in fact the banks lock their doors and can't do business. And it's, it's kind of cool. You know, and it's not just happening here, it's happening across the country. And, uh, the best advice I have to give people is take your money and transfer it out of the bank the big banks and put your money into your local credit union. Find out which one's good, which one supports your local municipalities or, or whatever, even your local school district. Use those credit unions. Don't use these credit unions that are based on big business anymore because they're not getting anywhere, uh, anyone anywhere. You know, all they're doing is getting billionaires richer and the rest of us poor. I will say amen to that one because, see, here's the thing, and this is from my perspective. By the way, a couple of things real quick that I want to hit. One, Wicked, the reason why I was trying to interrupt is because you were coming through muffled. I was going to try to get you to change your positioning on your microphone. Uh, that was the reason why I was trying to cut in. Um, one of the major things, and I was afraid, what I, I'm glad that you were able to hear what he was saying, but I'm not sure that everybody listening would be able to hear what he's saying right now. Um, but, okay. the, but from my vantage point, one of the misconstruences that um, that a lot of people are trying to put a spin on what the true backbone is behind the original Occupy movement. Now, like I said, different, and you said it beautifully when you said that there are different people who are coming in trying to use your forum, i.e. the bully pulpit that you've established in Occupy LA, to push different mm-hmm. agendas. And sometimes it's those splinter cells, those fragment um, groups that are going for a more outlandish agenda that's not part of the original reason for the occupation. And this is something that, this is the the primary thing that I've been worried about from square one is to make sure that the true message of what this is about gets out. Because once you hear it from the people who are credible sources, from the people who are there from day one, who are the backbone of this organization and the occupation, regardless of what city it's in, um, that message yeah. has to get out and get out properly. Because, you know, you've got different networks that are putting a spin. Oh, it's, you know, it's Tea Party version 2.0. Oh, it's liberal hell coming to life. And you've said that you've got conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, libertarians, everybody, Tea Partiers, all coming together on the Occupy movement because it is about basic, basically taking our country back the old fashioned way. And yeah, it's in 99%. Unless you're a billionaire, you're with us. It doesn't matter who you are. We've embraced our homeless population here. They work with us as a society. Yes, we do have our problems. But like, here at Occupy LA, we're facing a lot of the problems that society faces. And it's been difficult because we're very peaceful and we've been working together as a peaceful movement to keep things peaceful and to keep ourselves a peaceful society. But um, a lot of people do misconstrue what we're doing because, you know, these networks are paid not to tell the news. I mean, they're paid by these companies. They're owned by these corporations. And they're only going to say what their, their, their people want them to say. So, therefore, you know, they look for people who aren't the most articulate. They look for people who are pushing other agendas. And they look for things that aren't necessarily... Uh, the the movement as an as an overall perspective on things. Yes, there's a lot of things that we have in common as a movement and as people. And I think that's like one of the overall things is as a movement, we all want to have the same rights as people and all have a voice. And that's something that's very important too is everybody getting a voice, you know, listening to each other, learning each other's problems and fears. And as I said before, a lot of these problems, a lot of these fears, a lot of these misconceptions and things that are going on um, and uh, would be gone if it weren't for these these big businesses taking control of our money. Well, by the same token, you, you brought two words into play that have historic connotation to them. And you use the words trickle down. Now, a lot of people, both on the left and the right side of the aisle, are going to associate those words with Reaganomics. Um, yeah. 
what was originally brought out in the 1980s by what some pe- by who some people consider to be one of the greatest presidents this country has had, Ronald Reagan. Like I said, some people agree, some people disagree, some and they people. have their right. <laughs> they have their right. Some people. I think he was a good actor. Um, yeah, I mean, I know a little <laughs> bit for about Bonzo. Reagan's policies and whatnot. Um, I was a child of the 80s. I do remember a little bit. I learned a bit in school. I learned a lot from my family. Um, and, I mean, this isn't really necessarily about his policies, but it's in the same kind of, you know, if the, it, it, it's, let's say we put a responsible banking measure in that says the um, CEO of the Bank of America can't make more than X amount of dollars a year. That that keeps him from making this multi-billion dollar salary while they are taking away money from people's accounts, people's accounts who are, you know, broke. I mean, it's like they're charging, I don't know if anyone knows this, but to get your veterans affairs benefits, you have to have either, it's a certain bank, and I think it might be Bank of America, and they're charging $5 a month to have that account. They got what away from that. What is that? You know, I'm sorry. It's, it's, we got to stop, you know, the big banks and the big corporations from getting breaks, from taking our money, from paying to have powers. Corporate personhood needs to be dissolved. The corporation was a, is a wonderful thing and was made so people wouldn't be individually held liable for the standards of a business, yet at the same time it's being used against us in order to to this corporate personhood, corporations are not people, and right. they should not have the same rights as people. Correct. And that's what we're seeing. Like, in New York, J.P. Morgan paid the police department, you know, a couple of million dollars to help protect the financial district more. How is that right that all of a sudden J.P. Morgan pays the police department, and they go out and they to do security on Wall Street, okay, to pay our police department to go beat are people? Are you kidding me? I'm from New York. To see what happened, I was in tears watching those videos, watching that live stream. You know, I might be outside, but I'm our web administ- one of our web administrators and social media point people here. I'm online all day long watching these videos, seeing what's going on, watching the live streams from all across the country, and there's some serious things going on. Oakland is really scary. The night Oakland last broke loose when Scott Olson got shot in the face with a canister, right after it happened, I saw it uploaded from a cell phone on YouTube. That night was my one night off other than being in the hospital from the occupation where I went to see Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. I spent the entire concert crying because I was so upset at what was going on in Oakland. And I'm, I'm really saddened that more Americans aren't interested in their local occupation or what's going on as a whole and aren't upset at what as to what's going on and are too involved in their shows and their TV when in reality this is a lot more important. This is your future. Wicked Nemesis, come on in. Uh, have you been able to catch any of the stuff that the Daily Show and Colbert Report has been running? Um, unfortunately, I haven't. I know my uh, my friend's picture here from L.A., Ron, he, his picture was on The Daily Show holding up the corporate flag. Um, but other than that, I really don't get to see a lot of TV. I get to see, like, bits and pieces of stuff here and there. But honestly, like, I'm so tied up with what I personally do. My, 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 my watching is usually of YouTube or of live stream of watching what's going on within the occupation. Um, I've been trying to follow what's going on in the outside news. And other than the Michael Jackson trial, which is, like, literally right across the street from the occupation here, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because it seems like, the Daily Show and Colbert Report have actually been giving you guys more of a fair shake than MSNBC or CNN or Fox News has. Uh, I, I think that, you know, what you guys have done has, you know, really like, they keep showing the guys that are, in, you know, doing the dances and, you know, dressing up like death and, you know, take it, and like how they took a crap on the, uh, in New York, you know, they actually took a crap on the police car. I mean, that's the type of that they show. Yeah, exactly. The Daily Show showing what's real. Well, uh, let me me jump in for a second because I'll say this. You know, um, I kind of had a slight disagreement when they did the... um, Rally for sanity and every and possibly other evil things, um, you know Stephen Colbert, okay. John Stewart, and everything else, the, because of the way that it was being packaged, and it was supposed to be a mock on the Tea Party and yada da 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 da, which 
uh, there's pros and cons to both sides of that coin. But and this is something yeah. that I have noticed that John Stewart and Stephen Colbert, uh, Colbert's nuts to begin with. But by the same token, yeah. they do have a tendency to be a little bit more open minded in the way that they present things. So and it's it's it amazes me that well actually when I'm starting to think about Wolf Blitzer, no, it really doesn't amaze me that John Stewart's doing a better job than CNN. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> it's true though. I mean, a lot of people get their news from John Stewart and Stephen Colbert, and it's not really such a bad source because their news is pretty right on most of the time, you know? I mean, really they is. really are touch, in touch with what's going on. Um, unfortunately, like, I've seen some of our news media here. They're really not in touch with, going, with what's going on. In fact, in the L.A. Weekly blog, some asshole, excuse my language, um, <laughs> went and took took a, took my blog I had written about being in the hospital. For those of you who don't know, I was in the hospital for three days with a uh, infection. I had a... I actually had a um, abscess that went from my mouth and traveled through my body and ended up in my breast. I had to have surgery. I had to have it sliced open. And um, I have a big hole there that I got to pack every day. And while I was in the hospital, I had some serious issues. I was in a county hospital. It was my first time ever being hospitalized for any extended period. But it was only three days, and there was a lot of concerns that I brought up in this blog that, hey, you know, if I'm having these concerns as an intelligent person, wouldn't other people? Well, this guy completely misconstrued my blog. He posted, like, these random, like, pin-up pictures my friend Lily had done of me, which now he changed them to actual pictures, which he got permission to use. But the thing is, it's like, um, not for nothing, he completely misconstrued who I am. I mean, you guys know, yeah, you might see a sexy side of Liv Savage, but that's far from the truth and who I really am and what I really stand for. And I've been far from sexy since I've been out here, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going, tonight is day 30, today's day 37, and out of 37 days, um, I've spent 35 of them here. Three were spent in the hospital, which I got out on Monday, and I go back um, on Monday to wound care. And then the other two were spent just spending the night away. I mean, but I'm here every day. And even, even when I was in the hospital, I was working from my hospital bed just to try to further the movement because there's so many misconceptions. Like, out here, we have college education classes going every day at the OLA. We call it the OLA, People's Collective University, with college professors and other um, really great speakers. We have actions in multi-languages. We have... Um, March is going out every day. There's um, a lot of different awesome things going on, lots of committees. And it's hard to keep up the public, the general public, with what's going on right now. So, I mean, all you can do is just try to follow us. You can follow my occupation at occupylosangeles.org. And you'll see me post on there from time to time because I am a moderator and an administrator as Liz Savage. And you know what? This has lost me a lot of wrestling fans, but... You know what? At this point, it is what it is, and eventually they'll realize they're part of the 99% too. We'll see. And let me expand on that one for a second. Wicked, hang tight for one sec. Because we as a culture have a tendency to, I don't want to say... I don't want to use the word demagogue, but I will go ahead and say, I'll hybrid a word. Pedestalize, as in place on a pedestal to a certain degree, stars in our business, whether they be on the local level or the national level and it's almost like we're not allowed to have feelings opinions and express those opinions when it comes to the more controversial subjects um i have yeah i'm pretty sure that i've cost myself a few bookings here and there by expounding on some of the things that i believe in my personal life but by the same token i've always said i am who i am fast eddie lane is not a gimmick fast eddie lane is me and everybody, and you know, you're on my personal Facebook page, I do believe, so you know my shoot last name, um, which I have no problem doing it. I started using that on my Facebook page as, as honor, in honor to my family and to my parents. But the thing about it is, and we have an amazing thing in America. We have that freedom of speech. We have the freedom to voice and express our opinions. However, there is that line where as long as it doesn't infringe upon the rights of somebody else... I will agree to that 100%. Because we can, I mean, politically speaking, and even on other subject matters, Wicked Nemesis and Fast Study Lane may disagree. We have, and we probably will again. 
But by the same token, I'll also st- I'm sit here in the vault in the Full Range Entertainment Studios on this Sunday night, 731 Central Standard Time, and say, I may not agree with everything Wicked says, but I will definitely stand up and defend his right to say it any day yeah. of the week. And for people, it doesn't matter. And see, here's where I have that double-edged sword working for me and against me sometimes. Because one of the news channels, and it's probably been shown on more than one, but I know the one that I saw it on, had a snippet of an interview with Justin Timberlake, and I don't know the name of the young lady who is his co-star in the movie In Time. I don't know. If y'all know, y'all feel free to say it. Okay. Nope. <laughs> um, but now, they made the commentary, and I think it was during, um, I'll just go ahead and say it, I think it was during Red Eye with Greg Gutfeld on Fox News Channel. Um, it's a great way to fall asleep at night at 2 o'clock in the morning Central Time. And guaranteed cure for insomnia. But by the same time, <laughs> at, at Greg Gutfeld on Twitter. Um, but by the same token, they were making a mockery of some of the commentary that was being laid out there by Justin and his female co-star. Um, making the comment that they're going to say that it's a social, um, that end time is a social commentary of the trials and tribulations that our modern day population is going through. And that's what they said. Um, I'm sorry. I don't think that the movie is a social commentary on anything more than just it's a ripoff of the 1970s super hit Logan's run. Um, if you've never seen. If you've never seen the movie, go watch it. Um, it's yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I love the movie. It's one of my favorite of all time. Jenny Agutter and the glacier in the nude scene. Hello, how you doing? Um, well, you know, a lot of people are trying to compare this movement to other movement, other movements, but it's not other movements. I mean, this movement is completely different because it's brought so many different people together. The one. The one thing that really saddens me about this movement is we are doing this under our First Amendment rights. The right right to, you know, the right to speak, the right for peaceful assembly. And unfortunately, our First Amendment rights are being violated by police departments all across the country. And what bothers me is these police officers took an oath. They took an oath to protect the Constitution. And they're not living up to their oath and that is a charge in itself I mean these police really need to live up to their oath protect the citizens stop protecting these corporations stop protecting these private indi- you know these private industries and stop doing what they're doing to people who are sitting on the ground doing nothing peaceful protesters who have their arms locked peaceful protesters in San Francisco who are yanked off the ground at 2, and, two o'clock in the morning while they were sleeping and hand and thrown into cars. How are they doing anything wrong? You know, they were sleeping and they were yanked off the ground. You guys even know about that? Did not know about it. Wicked, did you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was everywhere. Uh, anybody that kept up on any of the Ustream, it was like, I think that was a coordinated attack. Uh, I think that happened at several places at the exact same time. I believe that's what happened. It uh, did. Yeah, you see, and that's what it is. It's like, you know, it seems like L.A. is the only people that really have a backing. Other than that, I mean, they're doing snatching grabs, which are totally illegal yeah. unless they're declared war on you guys. If they declared war on you guys, then you're all war criminals, in their opinion. And they can do what they want to, but it seems like that's how you're being treated. We haven't seen any snatching grabs here yet. You know, none of that kind of nonsense. Um, if it did happen, it's, if it did happen, it would probably be huge. Um, you know, but there's a lot of, especially in LA, there's a lot of different aspects to it. I'm, I'm surprised New York has not rioted yet, but they think, you know, a lot of people who are here at the occupation are pretty sure if there was some sort of violence against us, there would be a riot here. Um, and they, this time it wouldn't be just part of the city burning. It would end up being the whole city burning. You have everyone from every background possible here at Occupy LA. Um, you have a lot of full-time occupiers, part-time occupiers, and then people who kind of occupy, we call them nine-to-fivers, who <laughs> occupy from their home, yeah. who do what they can when they can. And we've been, you know, it's a, been an amazing outreach and support. Whenever we need stuff, we get stuff. And I suggest dropping off stuff at your local local occupations. If there are people occupying, staying overnight there, they can all use support, food, water, coffee, blankets, whatever it might be. We're lucky out here that we have tents. You know, but still even with tents, it's been 
it's been cold, you know. It's it's not quite as cold as it is in New York here, but today it didn't get, get above 50 degrees. Right now we're sitting outside, and it's about probably 45 degrees or so. It's very damp outside. You know, we got a couple layers on. We're still sitting out here working, running the generator, you know, waiting for the next rain to come over. Yeah, it's amazing. You're getting one of, what, L.A.'s 15 rain days today. <laughs> No, I mean, L.A. does. Like, last year when I moved down here, it rains a lot here. Yeah. A lot more than people think. Um, it's, it's a, it's a running like, gag. It's not like it doesn't rain. It just rains for, like, a period. It will be shitty for a few days, and then, like, it will just rain for, like, a couple of hours that day. I mean, only one, at one point during last winter do I remember it for just raining for, like, six days straight. And I was pretty sure that, like, the end of the world was coming. <laughs> I real um, I have to do this real quick. Uh, everybody hold on, because I'm, I'm not sure if... Uh, um, I would like to bring it. Uh, he just called in a minute ago, and he's a good friend of ours here on Beyond Ringside. He is, um, I think, in my humble opinion, the one who created the pipe bomb before there was a pipe bomb. The human hand grenade, Danny Only. How you doing tonight, buddy? Hey, I'm good, man. How you guys doing? Doing wonderfully well. Uh, I can, can I assume that you've been listening to the conversation with us and Liz, or um, what you got on your brain? No, no. Actually, you know, I I, uh, I was just fucking around on Facebook and uh, looking at different posts, and I saw uh, one of Wicked's posts that was talking about, you know, we got we got this going on today, and and you know, whatever. And, and I honestly, I didn't think anybody was going to be on the line. I called just to see if somebody was going to be on. And, uh, <laughs> apparently, you guys. Yeah, apparently, you guys are still on the line. Yeah. So, uh, we'll we'll tell you what. So, yeah, I mean. I was, I was just calling to say what's going on and, and see how things are going. Actually, it's been it's been a beautiful night. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I'll give everybody a quick reset and recap for those who just might be joining us. Uh, we try to keep everything going on Twitter and Facebook. Um, during our first hour, we were joined by NWA promoter Mike Searcy, who uh, gave us the breaking news that the National Wrestling Alliance will be giving will be actually bringing back the NWA Women's World Tag Team Championships. Also, um, re-solidified the fact that we have a brand new NWA Women's World Champion in Tiffany Rocks. Um, he's going to be keeping us posted on the upcoming tournament for the Women's World Tag Titles that's going to be happening in 2012. Uh, right now, you are listening live. Everybody is live at 738 Central Standard Time on Sunday night with Beyond Ringside, Fast Eddie Lane, Wicked Nemesis, uh, wrestling star Liz Savage, who is one of the people... Um, behind the scenes and in front of the cameras for Occupy Los Angeles, and we're now being joined by professional wrestling star, the Human Anger Day, Danny Only. Hi, Danny. Well, I got to tell you, Danny. Hey, how you doing, honey? You all right? I'm great. I mean, I had surgery and I'm still occupying. Nothing's getting me off this lawn. <laughs> well, I, I've got to ask you, and and, and uh, I play I play devil's advocate in every single discussion that I'm ever in, even ones that I back 100%. I play devil's advocate because one of the things that I believe is the weakest points in, in people is when they have their view and they refuse to listen to everything else. Um, so I always am, am open and willing to listen to the other side. So if you're doing the Occupy LA thing, I've got to ask you, what is your opinion on... Uh, the percentage of people who are actually trying to do some good as opposed to the people who are just like, oh, fuck, there's a whole bunch of people going crazy. I'm going to go downtown and throw some pipe bombs and smoke bombs. What 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 is your thought on them? Well, see, we don't have that problem here in L.A. because the LAPD are behind us, and they've been, like, helping us. So we don't have those who are throwing pipe bombs and smoke bombs. I mean, if we did, if we had the just... People who are like fake anarchists who think that's what anarchists are, like we'd probably be slapping them down. But at this point, our problem is we have people who think this is just a festival and they think it's a party and they've come here to party and do drugs. And personally, in my my opinion, I just want to grab a taser, zap them, bring them out into the middle of the street and kick the living shit out of them. But since we're a peaceful protest here, they won't let me do that. So, you know, we've been trying to deal with it, bring in drug and alcohol uh, counselors, deal with it on ourselves. Um, we use um, Shanti Sina, which is something made up by Gandhi. It's a word which is to make people on look the situation when things are going wrong or things are out of control. It's working to a point. I mean, and we're working as a community to try to figure out our community social problems, which are really the social problems that we face the planet at this point. 
Now, you know what? That's that's actually awesome because I I, I, I gotta tell you, I don't I don't know you from Mary Jane down the road. So I had no idea what you were going to come back with, and the fact that you came back with not only an intelligent response, but something that actually made sense. Um, I, I don't know how many people are going to listen to this show, and I don't know how many people that listen to this show are actually going to get up tomorrow and do something, but all of the Occupy thing, everything that you hear in the news and everything that you will see that is spun in the, the mainstream media, yeah, you know what, there's people out there that are just out there to, to, to toot their own horn and do a bunch of bullshit. But the, the bottom line is get yourself educated. I mean, whatever your opinion is, whatever your thought process is on what the government or what the anti-government is doing, get yourself educated. Go out, read, listen, you know, watch and see what's going on because... You know the, the the main thing that I've seen from 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 beyond. I mean, uh, uh, from Occupy Atlanta to Occupy New Orleans to Occupy LA to Occupy New York is there's a grassroots of people who are just sick of the way that we have been treated and the way that the entire populace has just been put down by this this elite group. This this top. You know, it, it all comes down to the one percent versus the ninety nine percent. Right. But you honestly, you can't you. You can't put a number on it because, you know, it, it's ridiculous. No one can isolate anybody into one group. But the, the point of it is, is, is look at what you're being told and take, take a second. Go outside of Fox News. Go outside of CNN. Go in Google and type in British news headlines oh, and see what the people in England are getting as, as their news about what's going on. The because Russian news the, is really good. Which news, that's what you want to look at. Go, go, go to the Drudge Report. Yeah, find find news outlets that are not being uh, perpetuated by the the rich one percent. Because you know, I read something the other day, and it said Fox News, the rich people telling other rich people what to say to make the middle class hate the poor, and that is one hundred percent exactly what is going on. What? And don't get me wrong. I have I have a very good job. I have a very you know good life. I'm not I'm not barely scraping by. I'm doing well for myself, but I'm still educated to the fact that every single thing that when you click on the TV and you see what is going on in the media today, it is 99 percent bullshit. It is what people are feeding you, and they want you to believe so that you can say, oh, these people that are occupying L.A., they're out of control, they're anarchists, we, we got to get rid of them so we can put these people back in charge. And the people that they're going to put back in charge are the people that are paying money for the media to put what they want to put on TV so they can stay on top. So I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I don't know the answers. I don't, I'm, I'm not the smartest dude in the world. The only thing I say is please just get educated. Don't listen to what you're being force-fed every single day. Listen to the people that are doing Occupy LA, Occupy Atlanta, Occupy New York, Occupy Wall Street. Listen to what they're saying, and then go do your own research. And exactly. you know what? If you do your own research and you're like, hey, these people are fucking retards, then fine, and that's your opinion. But at least get educated. Don't just get force-fed what the mass media is force-feeding you. Let me jump in well, for a hot... Can I tell you guys something? Well, really quick. Come on in. One of the things is, like, everyone says to us, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? My reply is, what are you doing? Okay, I spend 16 to 18 hours a day working on this tirelessly. At one point, we were spending 24 hours a day when we were getting robbed nonstop, and there was less of us here. But, I mean, seriously, I'm sick of people saying, well, what are you doing? Well, what are you doing? There's a million ways you can get involved in your local occupation whether it be through donating items, whether it be donating an hour of your time, whether you sit and go to a GA, talk to the occupiers, talk to the people who live there, you know, find out what's going on. When you see false media, call them out on it. And that's what I tell the media. They, they're, 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 their media, um, they're out here, their media unions are screwing them. I said, you know what, you should tell your bosses, we're quitting reporting your fake news stories. We're done with it. Until you start paying us a fair wage, we're reporting real news, you know. But it's not going to happen until people push for it. And everybody wants change. You can't want someone else to make the change for you. You have to go out and do it yourself. 
I've said that a number exactly. of times. Let, let me get in. And real quick, I mean, one one quick, I got 30 seconds to say this. Everyone that is going out there and being a complete asshole, the people that are putting the negative light on all the occupiers, being an occupier does not mean going out and bashing the windows of an establishment. That Thank is you. not the way to go about things. All you are doing is feeding into that stereotype that these people have no idea what they're doing. All you're doing is being a, a, a flash-in-the-pan anarchist, and it's ridiculous. Stop. Stop being ridiculous. Stop and listen hard. Yeah, you, you remember, you learn more by listening than you do by talking sometimes. And I'm going to counteract one thing you said, Danny, because they're not being anarchists. They're being one of the anarchists. Um, in my personal opinion... Mm. Um, one thing that I'll agree wholeheartedly about. Now, let me lay these on the line. And Wicked Nemesis, you're next in the queue. I'm going to bring you straight in. Um, the way that I look at things, number one, Washington, D.C. right now, all the way from our president all the way down to Congress, they give a damn about us one time when it's time for them to be reelected. Other than that, there's, no. agen- there's agendas in play all the way across Washington. Anybody who, think th- anybody who thinks that the, um, a, a vote is not for sale in Washington is smoking better crap than I can find. Or probably worse crap than I can find. Right now, I haven't been able to find crap for two years, which really pissing me off. I'm coming to L.A. Um, and San Fran, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to file that little card. Um, but continuing from there. Oh, they're giving it away for free yesterday. <laughs> yeah, no, a free weed for all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's like popcorn, cigarettes, hot dogs, sticky, sticky. And, you know, hey, what the hell? And <laughs> where am I? Th- I always miss the fun stuff. But And for those who honestly believe that there's nothing that you can personally do about it, Quit blowing yourself in the wrong direction. The winds are changing all the way across the board. I tell people, start the movement yourself. You don't wait on everybody else to push the damn car before it starts rolling. You go ahead and get out of the back seat, get behind the bumper, and start shoving that son of a bitch. Um, yes, welcome to be on Ringside Uncensored. Let's let it rip for the last 12 minutes of the show. We, we already have for the previous 20. Um, but the fact of the matter is, number two. You know, a lot of people want to sit back and talk about the legislation being handed down that's being aimed toward Wall Street and everything else and all the big banks that's being put out by the current administration. Please remember something. I want you to go back because contribution records are very public for everybody to see. They are sunshine documents, plain and simple. Note that the same people that the current administration is trying to smack on the hand right now and more than just the TARP money and all that, these are the same companies that were giving thousands of dollars to both sides of the aisle. They're giving... Billions. Yeah, they're giving big... I mean, insurance companies, banks, they're giving money to both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. And if you're pissed off about the fact that you're not getting that money, run for office. Start at the local level... Change takes place when you let it happen and make it happen. But you have to want it bad enough to do something about it. Run for local political office. Whether it's starting out as the veterinary control agent, whether it's going straight for the mayorship of your city, whether it's running for the city council or the county commission or the parish commission if you're in Louisiana. I mean, get out and be more active. The wicked nemesis on our show has been, has been using a word for a while, and I commend him for using it, and I have never really had a chance to say this until now. The word sheeple means so damn much in our current society. <laughs> wicked, really nemesis is, wicked nemesis started using that word, and I tip my hat. It's a beautiful word, and I thank you. for. I'm, I'm, I'm stealing it out from under you for this segment. Because don't be a sheeple. Be an innovator, not an imitator. Be original. Don't be left behind when the origins are made. Now, if you, you know what, I, I I agree one hundred percent. And you know, I, I've known Wicked for probably three plus years, and he's been using the word sheeple before he, since before Danny only was relevant in wrestling. He saw something in me, and he was just like, "All you sheeple want to boo this guy?" Blah 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 blah. But. The sheeple is is exactly the right terminology to use because if you look at if you look at the American populace, eighty percent of the people in the world will see and, and, and just digest what is fed to them. You know, just like oh, Fox News says that Barack Obama is a terrorist, so yeah, he's a terrorist, and it, it, it's just 
because people are ignorant, people are stubborn, people are lazy, and they don't want to go do their own research and find out the only thing. So anyway, I, I've got 10 minutes until Dexter comes on. It's a brand new episode, <laughs> so I'm going to bounce to go watch that. But I would not be a professional wrestler if I did not get on here and try to plug myself. Do it. So before I do that, I do want to say one thing. For everybody that is listening right now, if you were looking for one person, if you were looking for one person who will do exactly what they say they're going to do, exactly, 100%, what they're going to say they're going to do, they're going to do it. Not just to get your votes. Not just to be the, the, the status quo and not just to be the popular person. I'm telling you right now, for the past 10 years, the one person who has said and done everything that he promised he would do is Ron Paul. Yes. So if you want to go, he's go not, to, go he's to not the not the only, but I, I do enjoy Ron Paul. He's not the only one, though. I think my power team at this point, which I joke around, and I don't really talk about my politics, if Ron Paul is everything he says he is, if he could team up with Ralph Nader, they'd be awesome. <laughs> that, and you know what? I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%. That's the thing. And, and, and that, that's one little thing that the, 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 the mass media will kind of flip. They'll be like, oh, Ron Paul wants to make weed legal, so let's not put him in office. No, Ron Paul wants to make the state in control of what they do. Thank he you. wants Georgia to be in control of what Georgia does. He wants Alabama to be in control of what Alabama does. He doesn't well, want federal government to control everything. You know? he- Go ahead. Uh, and, and that's the thing. I mean, and, and, and like I said, don't just listen to me because I'm not the smartest man in the world. That's just my opinion. I think Ron Paul's the next, the next choice. But if you think it's somebody different, at least do it based on your own education, not just what on the media says. But let me go ahead and cue my deal. In two weeks, <laughs> North Andover, Massachusetts, Beyond Wrestling, the human hand grenade Danny Only will be making his debut in Beyond Wrestling, and I guarantee you that I'm going to beat the hell out of whoever they put in the ring across from me, and I see nothing but a lot of positive things coming for Danny Only and the Hate Junkies, in my opinion, the best tag team in the state of Georgia, and if anybody has a problem with that, we'll pretty much come beat the hell out of you. <laughs> Where can, real quick, give that, give everybody your Twitter real quick. Uh, if, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's uh, Twitter, uh, Danny Only, D-A-N-Y, just one N, D-A-N-Y, only O-N-L-Y. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash human hand grenade. Thank you. Or facebook.com slash hate junkies. And if you look on YouTube, YouTube slash hate junkies. And you will see uh, legalized violence across the world. <laughs> Danny, it's always great to hear from you, dude. You feel free, uh, dude. Feel free to call in any time. You know what I've said it before, and I mean it. All right, hey, you guys, seriously, uh, you out in Occupy LA, you be safe. Take care of yourself, Mabo. I'm gonna follow fucking... you on Twitter. I'm gonna follow you on Twitter. You better follow me back. Absolutely. Uh, wicked, I haven't heard you yet, but I love you, brother. You take care of yourself, and I'll talk to everybody soon. Be good. Take care, Danny. Uh, I have a Miranda. <laughs> yeah, hey, Danny, I love you, man. Wicked, come on in, buddy. Oh, hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk to Liz for a second. Hold on. Okay, no problem. Now, see here on a personal note, this is one of the, these. These are some of the things that have been irking me for a while. I don't live in Texas, so if I did live in Texas right now, I would be one of the ones standing up against their um, against their current go- the governor who instituted the fact that, based on what I have heard, illegal immigrants in the state of Texas can get a hundred thousand dollars toward um, tuition at a uh, Texas university. Why in the hell, huh? Yeah, it actually got brought to light during one of the Republican debates. I tried to monitor this because I'm watching to see who's going to be the front runner at any particular point in time. If anything, I would yeah. I would go with Ron Paul. I would go with Newt Gingrich because he's actually been okay. He's been on the inside looking out, the outside looking in, and he's brave enough to sit back and say, "Guys, we're screwing up." And that's something that a lot of people are afraid to do, and that's stand up and say we're screwing up. But this is something that's yeah. been going on for a long time in this country. You know, I am a huge supporter of states' rights. Now, me too. Let me get this very clearly said for anybody who's going to listen to the replay and wants to come back and say I'm a racist. Screw you. Um, I'm not. I am a believer that if someone wants to come to this country, 
the channels are in place for people to come here properly and legally. I do believe Absolutely. that it should be up to the individual states to be able to enforce their laws because it looks like our federal government sure as hell ain't doing it. Yep. And I yeah, agree. I'm from Alabama. I can use the word "ain't" and get away from it, uh, get away with it in a cor- in a factually correct sentence. But go from there. Yeah. You know, and the minute that Alabama passed their in, their illegal immigration legislation, it's not anti-immigration; it's anti-illegal immigration. And the first thing that happened was Eric Holder and the Department of Justice slapped a lawsuit on the state of Alabama. Why? Because they feel that the Alabama policies are stepping on national toes. Well, guess what? National toes? Start stepping in the right direction and do your blooming jobs. Plain and simple. Well, what, what jobs? <laughs> they have jobs still. Supposedly. I mean, that's part of the problem, too, in this country is back home in New York, like, I worked with some groups that worked with farm workers to get them legalized. And I understand there are people waiting on lists forever, but there needs to be, if you really care about getting your local people legalized, which is a problem here in L.A., like, a lot of people want to see everybody get free legalized, well, what they got to do is they got to step on the bureaucracy that's holding back the paperwork from going through get this paperwork through, get those offices moving, and that's the only way things are going to change. But see, there's a difference. I have no problem with people who come here with their families for refuge and they want to make a home and a life. I have a problem with people who come here just to work, to send money back to their country. Thank you. They live like they live like 30 people to a house and they take up every job. They're telling, oh, this isn't a job you'd want, they tell me. Yeah, whatever, dude. I've been shoveling poop since I was 13 years old. Shoveling horse poop is perfectly okay with me. I'd rather do that than have have no job at all. But, you know, moving to California, I'm an office manager. I'm a professional um, restaurant employee and and cook, and I work with horses. And I get told time and time and time I can't get a job because I don't speak Spanish. And I don't think that's fair, you know, to me because I do speak a little bit of Spanish. But, you know, if... If I moved to Mexico, I'd have to learn to speak Spanish to work there, and they probably wouldn't let me work there because I was an American citizen, right. and that's what they don't understand. It's like no other country in the world is is just allowing their workforce to be taken over by outsiders, and it's bad enough that we're sending so many of our jobs, like historically our jobs were like in factories and building things, and, and now we're not building anything, we're not creating anything anymore. Our farmers, our small farmers are being paid not, not enough not to grow farms, yep. not to grow anything on their farm. Monsanto has taken over. Big business has taken over and has pushed the little guy out. And all it's done is make, you know, they want to talk about illegal immigrants. Well, they're the ones causing the problem because they're creating a form of slave labor for these corporations. And it's just not right. Now, you know? one, thing that I've, one thing that I've been against for the longest time. And, and I'm not racist. I'm part Mexican. You know, I think everybody has a fair chance of coming over here, especially with what's going on in the border. You know, but I want to see them do it right, and I want yeah. to see everybody treated fairly. And by the same token, I'm part Italian too, so we, we you can make any WAP joke you want to make right now, and I'll be perfectly fine. You know, I think one of the first Italian jokes I ever heard in my life was, "What sound does an Italian tire make when it um, when it's flat rolling down the road?" Wop 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 wop. And well, they used to sneak over all the time too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was a big thing. The Italians were big on sneaking over and sneaking families in and staying longer. And I know a lot of people who come from Italian backgrounds whose grandparents are still technically illegal aliens. <laughs> there you go. But see, also, when, I mean, I'll tell you what, I'm going to step to the side for a second. Wicked Nemesis, come on back in. Well, first of all, uh, I'm about to have to uh, get off the list. I really appreciate you uh, coming in. I really appreciate what you're doing out there. Uh, one thing really, really quick I want to ask you about. Uh, what, is, what do you see as the state of, of uh, protesting? Do you think that the Occupy LA and Occupy Wall Street movement, as what it really is, is a movement, has changed protesting and will actually change the government, not just banking, as a whole? Um, I don't know. Protesting will always be protesting. There's protests going on daily. I honestly am not part of them because I don't really have time to protest. 
as much as protesting is fun and I've done it forever, I don't really have time for that anymore. So I'm doing other more um, things that are doing action in different ways. I think this movement has begun a huge change and it's going to wake up society to what's really going on and how they can make a difference. And I think it's really starting to to empower people because this whole movement is based on personal accountability. So once people are really getting that, they can get involved and they can be a leader and everybody's a leader in this movement, then then it's really starting to change people and get people on the right perspective of it. Well, I th- we just lost Wicked off the line, so I think he's going through a bad area, but uh, let me go ahead and say this. Um, folks, you've heard that it's not just one side of a political coin. It's not just one side of a social coin. It's part of all of us. And whether you, and I'll agree with everything, and because I'm one of the ones who says this all my life, for as long as I've been able to understand what politics is and what social issues are, don't just take at face value what you see or what you think you see. Remember, there is a glitch in the matrix. You have to find it, and finding it entails utilizing the effort to look for it. I've said this for years. I've said this for years. The one thing that everyone is afraid of when it comes to politics is an educated and informed voter. (laughs) If you base everything on a symbol or a word... If you base it on the donkey, if you base it on the elephant, if you base it on the eagle, if you base it on a cotton ball, if you base it on a vibrating bullet, you're wrong. Because the party structure as we know it has changed so much over the years. My my father's a lifelong Democrat who just started voting Republican because his exact words were, this is not the same Democratic Party that I grew up with. And I tried to tell him that for 10 years previous. I don't vote party. I don't vote ticket. I vote substance. I vote issues. I vote character. Exactly. Exactly. And until we get those people, like, I, I honestly, I, I, I'm sad to say it. I voted for Obama. I read his book, The Audacity of Hope. I thought it was beautiful. And it was like he was a Manchurian candidate because everything he said he was going to do, he flipped, he flipped completely over on. I mean, even down to saying that he was going to close the dispensaries here in California in 45 days. That's going to put thousands of people out of jobs. It's going to put people onto the streets who need to get medication who are going to turn back to hard drugs and it's going to create more crime. Why on earth would he do that? That's insane. You know, I mean, marijuana is such a huge industry here in California. I mean, literally, it's not thousands. It's millions of jobs. It's yep. so, it's like most of the... California also, I don't know if you know this, not, you know, dispensaries are supposed to be non-for-profits. But because they were giving them such a hard time here in L.A. County, a lot of the dispensaries started paying taxes to L.A. So not only would they be losing jobs, they're losing tax money as well. That's, it's, it's, it's insane. And right now, Absolutely California needs insane. it. And right now, California needs that tax money from what I've been told. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And- but also, on another run, no, I really got to run. It's been really awesome have you, for you guys to have me on here to discuss all this. But I have a couple more things I have to accomplish tonight, and I have to change my packing before I lose all white, and I already kind of have. Um, but real quick, guys, follow me at Liz Savage on Twitter. Um, I tweet all day long. You can also follow at Occupy LA, which is our official Twitter. Um, I tweet from there sometimes as well. And also, if you want to donate to me at the occupation, I could really use some help. Um, I fund our community, um, like people in our community. I also fund outreach trips where we send up, we send out buses to other occupiers. So when they need needs, I send them stuff. You can PayPal me at WrestlingDiva at gmail.com through PayPal. I can accept PayPal through there, and I have my Amazon wish list, which you can find on my Facebook. Okay. Um, and that's got gas masks and all sorts of neat stuff that I want to send to Oakland and, to, and stuff for New York. And um, we've been sending people to Oakland, to San, uh, San Diego, to Long Beach, and to other occupations. I was supposed to go to Pasadena today. I didn't make it out there. They're just starting up with their general assemblies. But get involved. Even if you think that the whole Occupy movement is crazy, go to some general assemblies. Talk to people at the occupation. Don't just talk to the people at the general assembly. Find out what's going on. Get involved. You won't regret it. 
Okay. You got it. Liz, thank you for taking the time to come on. We appreciate you being so generous with the time. And can you please post this on my Facebook? Of course. (laughs) Of course. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, I think Thank I tried. so much. I, I think I tried to post the um, the uh, promo flyer on your page, and I don't think it let me for some reason. But I'll go back and try to do it again. You know what? At worst, send it to me, and I'll post it on my Facebook. I think I might have my Facebook page closed because of all of the crazy people there you asking go. me to do dirty things to them. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is wrestling. <laughs> th- there you go. Liz, thank you again. Ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest, professional wrestling star, and I don't want to use the word activist, but I'm going to anyway. Oh, in this- I'm an activist. Okay. <laughs> an informed acu- activist with Occupy LA, Liz Savage, has just gone beyond ringside. Folks, we're going to go to a quick break. I'll be back to wrap things up in about two minutes. Stay tuned.